BYD Fi is a crypto exchange on desktop and mobile where you can spot trade, futures trade, use leverage tokens, and copy the trades of top trade. There's hundreds of crypto available on their spot exchange, as well as a free test account so you can practice futures trading without getting wrecked. BYD Fi. Hello everybody, welcome back. Live stream tonight if you're interested in that. But until then, let's have a look at this video and uh, see if there's any sense to be made of, of, of these charts right now. So, start with Ethereum, because this is what we've been looking at over the last few days. We hit that 200 exponential on the 4 hourly. It's a golden cross retest, first one that we've had since we had the golden cross, all the way back down yonder. Uh, but... Um, Rejected on the 20 moving average. So Bollinger Band Center rejection and another one. And basically the 10 exponential overnight. And now look, we're below and getting rejection on the 200 exponential. So actually, this idea of the Golden Cross retest V shaped recovery right this very moment in time does appear, does appear to be void. It does appear to be void. Uh, and we should be looking for lower on this one. So let's, let, let's extend our expectations to a to a daily. And um, if that's the case, then Ethereum does look like it, it should be moving down towards this 3,243, basically a 50 exponential on the daily. A very strong, decent support there. Uh, also the bottom of the Bollinge Band on the daily as well. Now look, <clears throat> if we're going to get a bounce on here, which I expect we probably will, just like on the four hourly, the bounce should take us up to a major area of resistance. Um, so we've got a 21 exponential, which is a 10% move, 10 exponential, which is a 12% move, and a, tw uh, a 20 moving average, which is a 14% move. So obviously, this if we were to get this bounce, those would be the targets. To expect them to break out from here, again, that's a hopium-style move, and we'd like to see that, but we might not. The reason we probably won't see that or that it's less likely is because simple Bollinger Band strategy suggests that whichever portion of the band you're in, you're 65% more likely to remain in that portion of the band, which basically means you're 65% more likely to be rejected than to break out. So the odds are against a breakout, the odds are in favour of a rejection. But that doesn't mean the odds are against the idea of a 10, 12 or a 14% bounce on Ethereum. So you can extend that, I suppose, over to other altcoins because they accentuate whatever Ethereum does. And you could look at maybe buying a dips on whatever altcoin that you like, provided that the chart is good and the setup is clean. Um, and uh, and yeah, make sure that you're buying the dip to sell the rip. Just remember that, okay? This is not this is not anything other than that. You know, the V-shaped recovery on Ethereum at the moment does not look like it wants to happen. Same deal going on over here for Bitcoin. Bitcoin's looking like a bit of a problem now. Uh, just just dipping down now below this major box. So interesting, but I suppose relatively concerning that we're starting to see that. And so if that is the case, we could see uh, Bitcoin drop all the way down to its 50 exponential moving average, which is a further 9% drop. Now, it doesn't have to happen straight away. It doesn't have to happen at all. But uh, that's where that one, major target would be. Um, there is a four hourly Bollinger Band, uh, not Bollinger Band, what am I talking about? There's a four hourly uh, 200 exponential and a simple, which is between uh, four and six percent move back down. Basically offering supports around 62,000 just above and 61,200 or thereabouts. And this is four hourly. So we've got four hourly support, similar to what we saw with Ethereum over the weekend. Um, and if that's the case, you might find yourself a bounce back up to a Bollinger Band, which is a 10% bounce. You might see that. Um, and if that fails, then yeah, it does go quite deep, I would say. However, let's look at something very interesting. <laughs> what the heck are you doing overnight? I couldn't believe it. I actually could not believe my eyes when I woke up this morning. Uh, I had a little look at, uh, at the charts as, as, as my eyes were trying to focus. I saw everything was down. So I thought, oh, I, I, had, a, I had a position on last night, didn't I? I had a, uh, I had a futures trade on uh, XRP. Let's, uh, let's have a look. To, obviously, that will have been stopped out. It was stopped out in profit. Couldn't believe it. Absolutely could not believe it. Uh, 66 cents tagged just in, in one go. What the hell was going on while I was sleeping? Uh, look at that. So, what does this even mean? That is decent buying pressure, I have to say. And basically, we're back down to where we started from yesterday. So, 
XRP is not one to be messed with. It, it, it does whatever it wants, whenever it wants. Now, this is a really good looking chart on the daily. So this is what we're going to talk about. So XRP is still actually really banging and offering opportunities at lower entries. Now, back down to the 50 exponential is an entry point, basically, just below 60 cents. It is an entry point. Now, whether you trust it, given what we've said about Bitcoin and Ethereum, is a different story altogether because obviously we all know that altcoins are difficult to trade while uh, bitcoin especially and, and ethereum now obviously are, are coming down so it, it makes it very unlikely that anything is going to be able to move counter to these moves you know it's just it's very hard and um, so you've always got to think that we always i try and push that idea home i know most of you think like that anyway but you can't look at a setup and go that is a great setup and bitcoin plummeting uh, and expect this altcoin to just shoot back up but there is a really amazing entry point coming for um xrp which is a little bit further down another four and a half percent down and then even a wick down below that to around 56 cents epic entry points for what could be a huge springboard uh, and continuation this looks like a giant shakeout in the markets and it's long overdue people have been so bullish massively bullish for such a long period of time my catchphrase on the channel or at least on the patreon is don't get used to high prices hey don't get used to high prices stop trying to over trade don't get used to high prices because the high prices is what people get used to and they fail to recognize that actually we've come from you know quite significant areas below these prices and so with that you know a normal absolutely normal standard procedure consolidations are going to happen you've got all sort of things like um uh, open interest rates and um and uh and, and unstable money flow indexes if anyone's want to flush these charts and, and and grab that money that's how they're going to do it and they're going to do it at high prices so now the high prices have started to to buckle a little bit and um, xrp actually holding up all right in comparison was a 20 percent move down from the top and um and bitcoin all the way back down to a 12 percent now we've been talking about all this for ages so i don't want to bore you to death with the idea of you know what a 20 to 40 percent correction on altcoins is going to look like because that's something we've been talking about for ages and also we've been talking about a much deeper longer lasting correction which would be given to us through um uh, traditional markets and, and that's not quite happening yet so we've, we've we continue to see uh, a relatively stable yet maybe rounded top you know on on s p um but look it's it's not broken down yet but the warning signs on the higher term time frames are there so this is why we wanted to stay in a largely a cash position uh, and again not get used to high prices because high prices across the board for stocks crypto everybody is there now um just very quickly before we go back into xrp the the, the dixie moved up to its four hourly 200 simple moving average <laughs> It's also looking like it wants to generate a pump signal here. So this was your resistance yesterday. We were expecting a rejection from it. Uh, we didn't. We've broken out from it now. And we did have three drives bearish divergence. And now that's actually broken out. So it looks to me like if we don't get rejected from here, we're going to get a pump on this one now. Uh, and the pump would be probably up to around 104.2 uh, pump city FM on the Dixie. Uh, and that's where a, a rejection is going to take place. But the, the problem that we're going to really sort of have at this stage now is that is this going to be a continued trend? Is we, are we going to pump up to here and find supports on these guys like we did on this portion of the pump where we came up, got a standard rejection? exactly as expected standard rejection exactly as expected and a rejection and then a breakout and then we used this as a building block and a golden cross to continue on up so we might be getting that now to be honest surprisingly strong again you know there's there's nothing wrong with backing both sides you know like i say i've made no secret about having you know relatively well i mean majority cash position and um, for these sort of i suppose changes in the market um, I'm still holding a fair bit of crypto, don't get me wrong, and my hodl bags are hodl. They will hodl until the day it's time to sell, which I don't believe is for quite a little while yet. But yeah, there, there, is, a, there is a chance of, of further downside, I would say now. Uh, Bitcoin down to the lower 60s, maybe even based on that daily, the upper 50s. And Ethereum, yeah, I mean, Ethereum could even come down to 2,500 if it wanted to on this daily. 
Golden Cross retest for a huge, massive bounce from there. Maybe even the v, a huge, epic V-shaped recovery from there. But that's not going to happen overnight. And if it did happen overnight, it definitely would be bought by myself. Absolutely would buy that stuff. Right, so uh, what were we talking about? Of course, XRP. So XRP here on uh, the Bitcoin pair. So we've had a big move up here. Rejection, 200 exponential and down. <clears throat> Overnight, more or less, 200 exponential and simple and down. And we're finding support on the Bollinger Band Center, which is, uh, what was it, 920 sats, we'll call it. Look, if we can hold here, this would be good. This would be excellent, actually. This could be another uh, place where you could think about buying it. Probably is, to be honest with you. Like, we're talking about the... Um, the, the standard Bollinger Band strategy, when you're above, this is major support, when you're below, this is major resistance, so we are above, we come down to retest it, so this, at this very moment in time, around what, 915, 920 sats, it is a buy actually, it is a buy. Now, I rotated a full Bitcoin into uh, XRP around this 900 sat zone a little while ago now, um, and so... Yeah, I'm not going to be rotating any more into this. I'm hoping for some kind of move out of this and uh, and, and, a, and a breakout from this giant uh, downtrend that we've been seeing. I know for a lot of people, and I can quite understand it, um, I find it hard to imagine that that's a possibility. And uh, you know, I, I, I completely get it. It's, it's a difficult one to imagine. But there is reason for me to believe that this will break out and, uh, and start pumping with a target above... Well, we'll talk. Well, I'd say a, a target above 1,200 sats. The main reason is that downtrends, for the most part, don't last forever. And when they start to slow down, you look for changes of momentum. And we've got a significant change of momentum on this. So this is um, your extreme example of uh, bullish diversions on a higher term time frame. Normally, three drives is all you need. We've had one, two, three... Um, and that would be it really. We haven't made another low since that third drive. So we should be looking for this one actually to start turning up basically now. It might not feel like it's doing it now, but that's kind of what we're looking for. Same thing with the money flow index. One, two, three, four, five. No, five drives and up. Let's have a look at the higher term time frames to see if we have anything similar. Um, we kind of do. We have one big drive here on the money flow index on the weekly weekly money flow indexes often only really give you a single drive before you get a big bounce we see that on um, on bitcoin for instance we've, we've seen that every time it marks a, a bottom you, you get that kind of drive so you get a one and then a two uh, which marks the low bullish divergence you have a one and a two which mark the absolute low and the march crash and you have a one and you have a two and which mark the low over here. So these are quite pronounced, very obvious, and it is Bitcoin, so it's obviously going to be a bit different. So if we're thinking about this one and a two, and then we're thinking about the multiple drives you've got on the daily, then we are kind of overdue for this to actually start moving up. And it, and it goes against everything that people want to believe, which is that XRP is a massive underperformer forever, and we'll never see anything ever happen to XRP ever again. But it's never the case, is it? Because that's, that's normally the... Um, that's normally the approach, the bias that, that gets people to miss out. Now, I'm not suggesting you buy XRP. It's, you, you've got to do what you want to do. But looking at the charts, uh, especially with the Bitcoin pair, it does look like it's ready to start to outperform Bitcoin at any point. Bring on the trolls. I know what you're going to say. Bitcoin outperform. I know it goes against everything you would expect, um, especially when the market's red. But I mean, it's kind of what it says. There's, there's nothing more to say about it than that. Is is that is what it says? If I have a Bitcoin and I want to build on that Bitcoin, I would consider strongly rotating it into XRP. Doesn't mean it'll happen tonight or next week, but it kind of points in that direction. And where there is a range here for Bitcoin uh, for XRP in and uh, and Bitcoin uh, on its on its pair. That's the main level of support and we're below it. Uh, the major resistance exists around this area here, which is around 2700 sats. Which meant that, you know, I suppose if we were to repeat this sort of move, uh, you would be looking to turn that one Bitcoin 
into three bitcoins. That's what would happen. So you, yeah, that's what it would look like, and that's what it would suggest. And again, this is a weekly chat. It doesn't matter. You know, I, I know what happens when people watch these videos. They'll watch it, and then it'll go down a little bit, and then it'll say, "This was wrong." I was watching your video, you were talking about a weekly chat. By the time I finished watching the video, nothing happened. What is going on here? I said, well, I'll tell you, it's a weekly chat, okay? So you have to be very patient with it. But you can see and you can hopefully understand what it is that I'm, I'm trying to point towards, which is that um, we have signs of changing momentum on this downtrend. We are at the significant lows, almost the absolute bottom <coughs> has been scraped. Now within this, we'll call it like a, well, I suppose we'll call it, uh, what do you want to call it? Um, a special offer. It's a special offer really on, on XRP. That's what's going on down here. It's a special offer, <laughs> you know? And, and so we're in the special offer area. The bargain barrel. That's where we are for XRP uh, versus Bitcoin. And so, look, just because it's in the bargain barrel doesn't mean that it can't be enjoyed. Um, it does take some balls to do it. I appreciate that. Um, but look, I don't mind XRP. I don't mind holding XRP because I believe that actually down at these lower prices, I think it's absolutely guaranteed to, uh, to make you some money over a period of time. It doesn't mean it's going to happen overnight. Definitely not. But look. Bullish divergence, bullish divergence, daily, weekly, and what's the four hourly got for us? The old bull div. So yeah, pretty sweet. And look, counter to the rest of the market, there was a little move overnight, hit a major resistance, came back down, Bollinger Band strategy, short-term time frames, we might be looking to revisit that as soon as today. Um, doesn't mean it will happen, nothing has to happen. Remember, TA is not a crystal wall. I'm not reading the future. What I'm doing is reading statistics, really. This is all these things are statistically it's more likely to make moves up from these levels based on the four hour, the daily and the weekly to outperform Bitcoin over a period of time. I think it's a good deal, to be, to be, to be perfectly honest with you. I think it's an absolutely awesome deal. But that doesn't mean that uh, the dollar value for everything will, will, will hold when we see that actually Bitcoin is really you know, toying with the idea of breaking down from this major area. Um, and look, anywhere from between 62 and around 58, well, 57 even, absolutely fair game on the table, ready for a major dip buy, major dip buy. Right, until then though, we are just going to have to sit back, watch and wait, because I wouldn't say the market is weak. This is a very strong market. You know, it's, it's, it clearly is a bull market, but... Crypto volatile, crypto pulls back just as much as it pushes up. I'm not looking for a big bear market to kick in, absolutely not. But this is probably looking more like the correction that we've been waiting for. Um, and look, dips to be bought on these areas would be amazing. Um, last thing then, Bitcoin dominance moving up. Um, it's at a horizontal area of significance. I wouldn't consider it to be anything particularly amazing or special. Um, and a breakout from here looks to take us back up to 55% dominance. At 55% dominance, you would also be looking for a rejection as well. But uh, if we're looking for huge, massive, major alt seasons later on down the line, the higher the better. And I'd be looking for around 57 to 58% dominance before a major rejection where a huge alt season will take place. So whether that's something you're happy to wait for or if you're looking to scale in at lower areas, there's there's a different, there's there's there's... There's not just one way to play this market. You can dollar cost average, scale in, or you can sit back, watch and wait. But personally, I, I think there's a very good chance we do see a bounce later today. But from what level? Is it from this level or is it from a deeper level? Because the deeper levels were just saying once again, the shortest dip you're going to get on Bitcoin will be around 62, maybe 61. Uh, the deepest dip you should be getting from Bitcoin is around 58 to 59. So just think about that, right? Think about that. If you're unsure about where to buy the dip, I suppose you would put in incremental buys at those areas in hope that you know, they will bounce from the first one. If not, they'll bounce from the second one. And again, if we are going to bounce, this might end up being a downtrend. And so even for Bitcoin, uh, a big dip down here would be a bounce up to around $68,000 at the most. And look, we've seen this kind of behavior back in 2021. 
Bitcoin started to consolidate massively after a huge run. Boosh. Look, this is all real life. This all happened in real life. This isn't hopium. It's just um, just trying to point something out. Bitcoin pulled back 27% over a period of three days and continued to drop into the 50 exponential uh, over a month. What's it doing at the moment? Why am I doing it like that? It's consolidated, what, 10%, 12% over a, a few days. Uh, with a view to maybe come back down to this level at some point soon. Um, what happened at that time? We had we had up upside, massive upside alt season on the on on the, on altcoins. But that was from a much higher level on the Bitcoin dominance chart, and a huge rejection took place. So it's similar. And uh, and again, I'm trying to trying to trying to be optimistic here that um, <clears throat> dips from Bitcoin get bought with altcoins and then the, the the bounce is way bigger and way stronger and way harder. I'm trying to present that as a possibility, not the absolute guarantee, but a possibility. For me, you know, obviously I've got more than enough Bitcoins, I'm not really looking to buy any more Bitcoins, especially at these higher prices, don't get used to higher prices. But scalping altcoins, buying the dip, selling the rip, yeah, that's that's what I'm interested in at these current in this market right this very moment in time, and look, we can be given entry points through Bitcoin uh, where, as and when we hit these areas, and then we buy the altcoins that we feel that you feel and I feel are um, offering the largest bounces. That's 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 what's going on here. There's nothing other than that. This isn't a buy and hold for dear, you know, hold on for dear life. That's not what it is. This is buy the dip, sell the rip, um, and as we're breaking down below, Bollinger Band centers on Bitcoin and, and lots of others, you sell at resistances. No different to how we've been playing the market throughout December. You buy the dip, sell the rip, buy the dip, sell the rip, buy the dip, sell the rip. That is the strategy here, and that is how we are able to feed our families, if you're a trader like myself. Right, I'll leave you with it there, nothing much more to say. It's a good look out there, and I don't think it's too much of a problem, in fact, I think it's actually an opportunity that we've been waiting for, and even though we are measuring deeper dips, there is evidence to say, at least for one of our favourite <laughs> favorite, favorite um, lads over here, the XRP, um, there is major opportunity, and it goes against everything the trolls will throw at me today. What are you talking about? XRP is going to move up one of the moment. What are you talking about? There is statistics is all I'm talking about. That's all I'm talking about. Right. Hopefully, I'll see you on the live stream tonight, everyone. If you want to join, there's links in the description. Otherwise, hope you have a nice day and take it easy.